In this video, we're going to look at three different types of sample spaces. And uh, the first thing you really need to understand is what a sample space is. A sample space is really just a way or a tool to help us list the total outcomes for a given event. And so there are a number of different ways to do this, but all of the different types of sample spaces really are about helping us figure out the total number of outcomes for a given event. And the reason why this is useful is sometimes it's hard to actually see what all of the different outcomes are. And so this is just a way that, uh, or, or different types of tools that we can use to do that. So the first, uh, the first example here states that a bag of marbles contains three red, two green, and five yellow marbles. Use a sample space to show all the possible outcomes. Well, this is a pretty simple uh, situation where really we just have one kind of layer to it, and that is that we have these different types of marbles. Right? We have some, uh, we have some red marbles here, and we have some green marbles here, and we have some yellow marbles here. For this particular example, we'll use a list as our sample space. And lists work really well when we have just a simple event that we're taking a look at. So in this case, the, uh, the marbles. So I'm just going to kind of quickly uh, list out all the different outcomes. We have three red marbles, so I'll just use R, R, R as, uh, to represent our three red marbles. And I've got two green marbles, G, G and I have five yellow marbles. Y, 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 Y. And so by looking at the list, we can actually total up that the total number of outcomes is 10, or we have 10 outcomes altogether. And then we can use this information to help us determine the probability of different events. So for instance, if we want to know what the probability of getting a red was, well, we could count up that we have one, two, three red marbles out of our total 10 possible outcomes. Likewise, if we want to find the probability of a yellow marble, uh, we have five yellow marbles out of a total of 10, which simplifies to one over two. The second example here states that a die is rolled and a coin is tossed. Use a sample space to show all of the possible outcomes. Well, for this particular one, the first thing that you should probably notice is that we actually have two parts to our uh, event. We have the action of a die being rolled, and we have the action of a coin being tossed. And so because we have two parts to our sample space, we could use a list, but we're going to make use of a table instead. And a table works really well as a sample space if you have two parts to an event, two parts to an event. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to first of all list all the possible outcomes for my first event along the top here. So a die is rolled. So a die has six outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six. And a coin has two outcomes, heads or tails. And so now based on this, what I really have is I have the makings of a table. So I'm just going to quickly draw that table in. Now inside of each cell of the table, what we're going to do is we're going to write the combinations for the first part of the event in blue and the second part of the event in pink. So all along the first row here are the outcomes that have a heads as part of it, and the bottom row are all the outcomes that have a tail on the coin. And then what I'm also going to write now is the numbers in here. So 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, and 6, 6. So now by looking at this, we can actually see that I have a total of 12 different outcomes. And you actually probably could have seen that right away because there are six ways or six possible six outcomes for the first part of the event and two outcomes for the second part of the event, giving us a total of 12 outcomes. And this table neatly shows now what all 12 of those outcomes are. So if I wanted to know what the probability of 
having a six as one of as part of my outcome, then I can quickly count and go, okay, here is uh, a six as part of that outcome and a six as part of that outcome. So now I have a total of two favorable outcomes out of 12 total outcomes, which is the same as one over six or 16.6 repeating percent. The final sample space we're going to look at is a, a sample space that's called a tree diagram. And a tree diagram works really well when you have more than two parts to an event. More than two parts. And you can tell by looking here that we actually have three parts to this event. So let's identify what all of those are. Um, we have a coin is tossed twice. So that could be the event in green and uh, the event in blue. And we have a spinner is spun once. The spinner shown below is spun once. So the first thing we should really do is make sure we, we can identify what all of the outcomes are for each of the individual parts to this event. So I'll use the same colors to kind of match that up. Uh, for one of the coin tosses, we have heads or tails. For the second coin toss, we have heads or tails. And then for the spinner, we have four different outcomes, uh, purple, blue, green, and red. And remember that the key to this is that all of the outcomes for each of these sort of parts to the event are equally likely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to start building a tree diagram. And to do that, uh, I'm just going to kind of make a list to start. I'm going to have three parts to my event. So here's part one, and then part two, and part three. And this is just to kind of help me organize this. I'll just put some dotted lines here so you can kind of see the different parts. It doesn't matter what order you put the parts in in this particular case, but so a good technique then is to start with the part that has the most outcomes. So in this case, it's the spinner. So I'll do that. Um, part one, I have four different outcomes. I can have my purple, I can have a purple, the spinner can end on purple, blue, green, or red. Now, for the, sec for the second part of the event, I'm going to use the green coin toss. And what I'm going to show is that if I get purple with the spinner, I can still get heads or I can get tails on the coin. And if I get blue with the spinner, I can still get heads or tails. And if it's green, I can get heads or tails. And if it's red, I can still get heads or tails. So what this is really telling me is that regardless of what happens in the first part of the event, both outcomes are possible for the second part of the event. And likewise with the second coin toss, um, regardless of what happens in part one or part two, I can still get heads or tails in part three, heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails heads or tails, and heads or tails. So to find the total number of outcomes, all I need to do now is tally up how many uh, branches I have in part three only. So in this particular case, if I look down here and tally that up, I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I have a total of 16 outcomes. And like we did in the previous one, I could actually calculate this by showing that, I, look, I have four outcomes in the first part of the event, and I had two outcomes for the second part and two outcomes for the third part, which 4 times 2 times 2 is 16. So that's a shortcut way of getting the total number of outcomes. Um, but a sample space also lists all of the outcomes. So if I want to read uh, the sample space here, so if I want to read the sample space here, I read al along the branches. So for instance, purple heads heads is one possible outcome. Green tails tail is another possible outcome. So if I wanted to, let's say, find the probability of green and one heads, I'm going to look at, see which ones allow that to happen. So here I've got green uh, tail tails. Well, that doesn't work. 
Here I've got green tails heads, so that one works. Green heads heads, that does not work. Green heads tails, that works. So what I see here is that two out of 16 of my total outcomes are favorable, which is equal to one eighth or 12.5%. So just to recap, we have three different sample spaces that we'll make use of in this unit. We have lists, we have tables, and we have tree diagrams, and uh, each one of them is useful for uh, a certain type of situation.